Fradden is a small and unremarkable village in the middle of Cornwall. In the 1930s, it comprised of little more than a few houses, pub, chapel and garage, all strung along the A30 trunk road from London to Penzance. Today, the village is bypassed and the chapel closed. The pub's still there. It's rather nice. The garage is long gone, but from the 1920s to the 1970s, it was owned and run by a local man, Ray Bullock. Ray ran a lorry for haulage and bought, sold and repaired motor cars and motorcycles. At some point in 1935, he chanced upon a copy of Practical Mechanics and decided he'd like to build a flying flea. Henry Minier's book had been published the year before and there was quite a craze for the flea on both sides of the channel. The first British built flea was constructed by Stephen Appleby at Heston in 1935. It flew and crashed on its first flight, fortunately without injury. Ray bought plans for three shillings and intended to build his own flea, but this didn't happen. Instead, he bought a complete aircraft from Snelling's Light Aircraft Services of Darwin, Lancashire. It was test flown at Barton and then delivered to Fradden by road. Ray had never flown an aircraft, nor did he have an airfield, but these trifling matters were of little concern. Loading the flea into the back of his lorry, he drove a mile or so east onto Goss Moor. Here the A30 ran straight and as well as being wide, was free of posts and telephone wires. There was little traffic in the early morning. After taxiing up and down a few times, Ray attempted to take off. For some bizarre, unknown reason, Ray thought the control stick had to be pumped back and forth, much like the village water pump. After briefly lifting off, the inevitable happened, Ray slamming into the ground and badly damaging the aircraft, fortunately without injury. By the end of May 1936, three British pilots had been killed in fatal accidents in flying fleas. This accident killed Flight Lieutenant Ambrose Cow at Penshurst Aerodrome in Kent. In spite of this, the Air Ministry decided against banning the flea. Instead, they asked the Royal Aircraft Establishment to test a flea in a wind tunnel at Farnborough. The test proved that whilst the concept of the flea was quite safe, at higher speeds and with a rearward central gravity condition, the aircraft could become unstable. The flea used for the test was built by Charles Mercer, West Malling in Kent. In April 1937, Ray bought the flea from Mercer, possibly exchanging his damaged aircraft as part of the deal. Like Ray's earlier aircraft, this flea was powered by a Scott 25 horsepower two cylinder two stroke engine. Using a more conventional takeoff technique, Ray managed to get the thing off the ground. Unfortunately, flying off the road with a smoky Scott engine upset the milkman and his horse. Ray had to find a field near a Fradden to continue his activities. At about the same time, Ray received a letter from the Air Ministry. His unlicensed activities had come to their attention. They asked him to go to Plymouth Airport, see the Air Ministry examiner and do what was necessary to obtain a license. Whether they intended him to fly there in the flea is not recorded, but that's what he did. Arriving overhead Plymouth Airport, Ray's rather unusual spiral landing technique caused quite some consternation amongst onlookers. On stepping out of his machine, Ray received quite a wigging from the airfield manager. He showed him the Air Ministry letter. The manager went to see the examiner. The examiner gave Ray several books to study. These had to go on the seat of the flea. Ray sat considerably higher on the way home. About a year later, Ray did obtain his pilot's licence, taking his test in a Hilson Praga of the Plymouth and District Aero Club. The Royal Aero Club records were useful because on the back of the licence card was a photograph of Ray. At some point in 1937, the flea came a cropper at White Cross, just west of Fradden. Again, Ray was uninjured, and to replace the flea, he bought a BAC drone from Humphrey Dimmock of the Ely Aero Club in Suffolk. Ray, assisted by his wife Hilda, recovered the drone and in the summer of 1938 flew it from a field at Fradden. Ray liked the drone. It was easier to fly and less fickle than the flea. He flew it a lot through the summer of 1938. On one occasion he flew to the Scilly Isles, which was 70 miles from Fradden,
There was no proper airfield on the Scillies, the present airfield not opening until the summer of 1939. Instead, aircraft landed on the second fairway of the golf links at Hewtown. The golf course airfield is marked on this pre-war aeronautical chart. Ray was rather miffed at the two shillings and sixpence landing fee. It was rather steep. Unfortunately, in the late summer of 1938, the drone was damaged in a landing accident at Fradden. It wasn't repaired. Instead, Ray cast about for another aircraft. The aircraft he bought was quite unusual, being the prototype Parnell Pixie, built for the Lim trials in 1923. Initially powered by a 500cc Douglas flat twin engine, it was later fitted with a Blackburn Tomtit 700cc inverted V-twin. With the Tomtit engine and the short wings fitted, it had won the Abdullah Speed Prize at Lim in 1923, recording a whopping 76.1 miles an hour. In 1924, it was sold to the Air Ministry for trials. It's seen here at the Hendon Air Pageant in the summer of that year. Afterwards, it was stored away. In 1936, the Pixie was resurrected, being based at Maylands Aerodrome, near Romford in Essex. Ray bought the Pixie in January of 1939, dismantling it at Maylands and carrying it home in his lorry. Back at Fradden, he stripped and overhauled the Blackburn Tomtit engine. He also modified the bottom of the seat so he could store a couple of tins of petrol under the seat cushion. Undoubtedly, after the two and six landing fee on Sillies, Ray didn't want to get caught out by unnecessary expense again. After all, he had free petrol at the garage. He subsequently told his friend Courtney Thomas that the idea was to refuel in flight. He claimed the idea was to stand up in the cockpit, hold the control stick with one's knees, lift the seat cushion, pluck out a funnel, and a fuel can and then take the fuel cap off the tank in front of the windscreen and pour the fuel in. Our crash test dummy can testify that this is indeed impossible and the Tomtick cockpit was tiny in any case. Those who remember Ray Bullock in Fradden always mention his excellent sense of humour. Unfortunately, on April the 25th, 1939, the Pixie was destroyed in a takeoff accident, flying from a field near Cosworth Farm. The aircraft left the ground but failed to gain much height, sinking back, hitting the ground and overturning. Ray broke an arm and a leg. By the summer of 1939, the ever cheerful Ray had recovered from his accident. He was planning on obtaining another machine, but the Second World War broke out. His flying days were over. What happened to the aircraft remains unclear, although this advert from 1947 clearly shows the drone for sale. Ray's friend Courtney Thomas took him for a ride in a Tiger Moth in the 1970s. He also wrote an essay entitled Ray Bullock, The Flying Man of Fradden, the story of a Cornishman who built, flew and crashed his own aeroplanes. Ray died in 1980. Regular viewers will remember that I resurrected a Praga B2 engine, originally fitted to a Hilson Praga, earlier this year. I looked at the Air Britain records which are published online to see how many Hilson Pragas had been based at Plymouth. There was only one. To my astonishment and delight, I saw it was the same aircraft my engine was originally fitted to. That engine wasn't fitted until April 1939, so Ray didn't fly behind it, but it remains as a link to the past. Ray might not have been the most successful of pilots, but his story is worth remembering. As always, thank you for watching.